Hi, I have the FormBot T-Rex 2 Plus and I was looking to print with flexible materials. However, after doing a bit of reading, the standard extruder hardware here doesn't seem to do well with flexible materials. So I was looking to upgrade it to handle the materials a little bit better. So I came across a company called Diabase, which create the Flexion extruder. However, I couldn't find much information of how I could, whether that um, the extruder would work with the T-Rex so I thought I'd get it and give it a shot and share how it went. The Flexion extruder parts come in this box here, a little sticker with the various settings for different types of materials and then inside you've got the, the parts, there's the main extruder hardware here um, the kit here is for the E3D hot end, however we're only going to be trying to use the top part and the tubing, all the other parts we don't use. I just got this kit because it was the cheapest one of the ones available that it provides the hardware here that we're trying to use. The tools I'm going to need here are the Allen wrenches that came with the form bot. You're also going to need a smaller one, a 1.5 millimeter one. A small wrench, um, Phillips head screwdriver, and a scalpel blade. I'm also going to need a soldering iron and a desoldering tool. I'll get to that in a little bit later. I'm going to pull apart the stock extruder now. The instructions that came with the FormBot will show you how to take the actual head off the printer. And it's basically these two screws right here. You loosen and the whole head comes off quite easily. Okay, I've pulled apart the stock extruder here. I'll quickly point out why this doesn't work well with flexible materials. It's because of the two gaps above and below the feed wheels. When the material is being pushed through to the hot end, they can clump up in the gaps on above and below the roller just because they're just so flexible. Okay, I'm gonna get the parts that we need now. Need the control knob, main hardware bits there, and the two PTFE tubes. together. Now I'm going to turn the control knob here to the 4 setting, which is the loosest setting, just to start off with. Now the next part is to adjust the feed wheel here. Um, the instructions said to put in a bit of um, hard filament like PLA or ABS um, to align the wheel here. But I found it's just a little bit easier if you just look at it visually to line it up in the center. So I'm just going to do that. Okay, I'm just tightening the feed wheel screws here is the one that goes onto the flat side of the stepper shaft here and reminder there's another one here which just um, tightens the whole wheel onto the shaft here and it looks good. Okay looking at the hot end parts here now 
Now the Formbot is a little bit different to what other manufacturers do in that the PTF tube doesn't go all the way through the hardware to the hot end. There is a little bit of PTF tube inside the heat brake here, but not at the top here, so the PTF tube doesn't go through. Now I had two options here. One is to drill this hole larger so to get the PTF tube through. I was a little bit nervous about doing that, so I'm going to instead cut the PTF tube that came with the Flexion parts, so that'll fit nice and snug between the Flexion parts and the mounting hardware here. I'm going to cut the tube here to just a bit over 12 millimeters. I'm just going to do it approximately and then I'm going to trim it down to make it all snug. So what I'm going to do here is put it into the flexion part here. And you can see the little taper there lines up nicely in the wheels. Now I'm going to get the form bot parts and I'm going to slowly trim back the, the tubing here so that it fits nice and tight in the block here. And I'm going to do that while trying to put a bit of a taper around the edge of the tube here so it fits nice and lines up nice with the hole in the end here. Okay, I've been working at this piece of tubing here so it fits nice and snug. I put a little piece of hard rigid flip filament in here just to help the lining up and trimming. So I'm just going to do the final fit here. And everything seems to fit nice and snug. I'm going to tighten that up. Assembling the connector board, there's a part on the flexion intruder here which comes very close and touches the soldering contacts on the connector here. So what I did was desoldered this connector here and just put a very small amount of solder on the part that is away from the flexion um, part here. And to minimize the risk of any short circuits, I'm going to put a piece of Kapton tape on the part that's touching the circuit board here. I'm just going to stick the piece on here and then I'm going to just trim it a little bit and fold it back. I am now going to insert the top half of the tube here that came with the flexion. Now I'm going to move that sleeve up, up a bit. The idea is that it'll push against the circuit board and prevent this tube from sliding out during a extraction. Put the connector board back on now. You can see how close the Flexion hardware gets to the solder joints at the connector back here on the circuit board. If there is any problem with these connectors, this cable connects to the thermocouple, so what you'll see is bad temperature readings or no temperature reading. Um, so just keep an eye on that when you first power it up. Okay, I have the extruder all back together again. You can see the, the original covers fit over the flexion parts. The only thing is the control knob is hard to turn and get to um, with the standard T-Rex parts. Um, not a big deal, I just take off the cover and adjust it whenever I need to and put the cover back on. 
Um, other than that, everything fits great. I'm going to go now and put this back onto the printer.